Right, you guys got another video here for you on how to block any program from running in Windows 11. You can also use this on Windows 10 as well, but we're on a Windows 11 system here. We're going to be using group policy and I'll show you a bunch of different ways that you can block applications from running on your system. And this is also good uh, for controlling the system as well and stopping people from running certain apps. So first off, we're going to type group policy editor into the search and open up the group policy editor here. It's broken down into, so we will be covering in this video, the software restriction policies to block uh, your programs if you wanted to use that method. And I'll also show you app locker on how to use app locker to use publisher path or hashes to block uh, programs. And we can also use the application control policies and there's other restriction areas we can use as well which we'll talk about later on in this video. These are some of the locations that we'll cover in this video. And it will be a full video on how we can block all applications using the hash rule, path rule, or publisher, or using other policies. But before we do any of this stuff, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor, CD Key Sales. If you're looking for a cheap Windows 10 Pro or a cheap Windows 11 Pro OEM key, then check out the links in the video description. Head over to their website and create yourself an account once you've created yourself an account, choose your product and use my promo code capital B capital R 09 and apply this to your order and get a 30% discount on all of your purchases on CD key sales. Once you submit your order, they will then send you your key and you can either use that key to upgrade from Windows 10 or Windows 11 home to pro or you can use it to activate Windows by using the activation key that they send you, just like you see on the screen right now. So back to the tutorial, but first what we're gonna do is we're gonna be taking a look at application control policies first. So inside here, you will see App Locker, and once you populate App Locker, it will look something like this. And this is broken down into executable rules, uh, Windows installer rules, script rules, and also packaged app rules. Let's take a look at the executable rules first. There's none inside here. So let's create a new rule. And inside here, we're going to literally go to permissions and we want to deny because that's what we're gonna be trying to do here. And we're gonna deny that for everyone. So this is now gonna deny uh, the permission for everyone. And it's gonna be for publisher, path or file hash. There are three different types of rules which have three different effects on blocking applications. So we're first off start with the uh, file path, and this is what we're gonna do first. So let's go ahead and block it by path. So click next, and now we need to browse the path of the application that we wanna block. So I have a little temp cleaner here program, and we're gonna go ahead and we will select this program like here, and we're gonna click open, and now it's got the path right here. Click next. And you can see here, add exception. And we can either change this to publisher. We can change this to path or hash or whatever it is you want to set this as. So once you've done that, uh, you can click next. And this will move us on to the next stage. But they have exceptions there, but we're not going to be covering any sort of exceptions for this rule uh, in this video. But you do have an exception there as well. So let's go ahead and click next here. And now we can create this rule and it's gonna go ahead. You can also create a little description there. So let's create, and it says this default rule is not currently uh, in your rule list for this rule collection. So basically we're gonna say yes here and this will populate a bunch of little rules with our deny rule right here. So now if we go back to that location where that file was that we wanted to block, You'll see here under path, if we go and run this, it says this app has been blocked by the system administrator. It's not going to be able to run because we've blocked it. So that's the big uh, way of blocking it. But the problem with this way is if I change the file extension uh, to say clean or clean one or whatever, you can see it starts to run and it's now running. So it's not perfect. So you may be wondering why that run after we changed the file name. And that's because the path has now changed because the file has changed. So you'd need to put permissions in place to stop people from changing file names. And you can do that as well. So let me show you another option that you got here. You can create a new rule, permissions, deny, 
and we're going to go ahead and go conditions and you can see here we have file hash so let's go ahead and select file hash browse for that file so let's go browse files we're going to use that same file and we're going to click next and now we're going to click create and this will now block it by hash so if i go ahead and run this you'll see it won't work but if i try to rename it it's not going to work because the file hash has been blocked let me show you so it's blocked the file now we rename the file and again if i rename it to say put two on the end here and try to run it it still won't work and that's because it's now using a complex uh, blocking system where it's using the hash of that file and it's now blocked it the downfall with hash is if you update that file with a newer version it would then run and that's because the hash is changed for that file and it doesn't matter how many times you rename it or whatever you do here it will not run because we've blocked the hash of that particular file but like i said if you update to a newer version of that file or use an older version of that file it will run because the hash is not the same because that is like its fingerprint for that particular file so hash has its downfall sides as well as path so let's go ahead and we'll take a look at other options that we have but remember with a system fully locked down this would not be possible to run this file because you would obviously make other changes inside the group policy to stop that from happening so let's go back to app locker here and we can now look at the executable rules right here so let's go inside here again and we'll take a look we've got two files here let me just quickly remove these rules because i want to show you another method using the software restriction policies which i did talk about at the beginning of the video so let's go ahead and do that so it's inside the security settings here and in inside here we've got software restriction policies let's go back in here and inside additional rules so once we've got this if you don't see anything here you need to populate this to get it started like I did at the beginning so let's go ahead and we can create a new path rule first but you do have new hash rule a new path rule so let's go ahead and do a new path rule browse this one right here and what we're going to do is we're going to go into uh, the windows directory and we'll block say for instance notepad and this is a windows file so you can block windows files by using this as well so let's go inside here and we'll choose say for instance notepad and we'll click OK here. And we're blocking this by path and we've got it as disallow and it's not going to basically run because we've disallowed it. So let's click OK. And what I want to do as well, that is running the path uh, rule. So let's go ahead and we'll create a hash rule as well for this one as well. So let's go ahead and click browse and we're going to go straight into the Windows directory again and we'll select notepad and we'll take a look at it so let's go ahead and do this right here so i'm going to go down to notepad click open and you can now see it's using the file information for the hash of that file and this is the information right here that it's showing you now again if that notepad version changes this hash won't work and you will need to add it again and this is what system administrators will be doing all the time keeping them updated so we're going to go ahead and add those two in and again there's some other rules here but we're going to leave these for now you can export this list as well so what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll try and run notepad and see what happens it's probably not going to work because we've got it added in here might need to restart or i might need to uh no we don't have to restart so there we go that's good so there it is the app has been blocked by the system administrator and it's not going to change until that file has been updated and it won't matter what you try and do it's not going to work so let's go ahead and go into user configuration here and administrative templates and in system and there's another area which you can block or restrict applications from running and it's this one right here so it's don't uh, run a specific windows applications so we can block windows applications by using this method right here as well so let's go ahead and we'll double click on this and we'll add in some applications that you want to block here so for instance if you wanted to block say uh, notepad you could if you wanted to block other 
applications you could as well, like Paint, or uh, you've got the Windows Store or other applications. You have to put the, the name of the executable file inside here, just like so. And if we click OK here, click Apply and OK there, and we can show this here, it's not going to run because we've blocked it and it won't allow it to run. But if we click on it here, you'll see there's no window popping up here. It's just blocked it. And that's what it does. This method does a different version of blocking and restricting from running on the system compared to the other versions. So let's go ahead. You can add as many as you like inside here. And if you want to add more in, you can do inside the Windows directory. There's loads of them there that you might not want running on the system, like Reg Edit. And sometimes you need to, uh, you know, restart the PC or you need to uh, log out and log back in again, and it will then put those policies in place. I didn't click OK here on the actual window, so it will probably run. There we go, it has run. So let me go ahead and quickly click OK on that group policy window, and it will probably stop it this time around. So let's go ahead and do that right now. I'm going to type Reg Edit right in here again. Click on this, and you can see it's not opening. It's, it's completely restricted. It won't let you run as administrator. It won't let you run when you click on it. So that is another way of blocking applications and stopping them running on the system. Now, let me show you this next method, which is the packaged app. I wanted to show you that as well on this video. So let's go ahead and remove all of this information here. It's not going to let me do that. So let me just cancel out of this and put this to not configured. There we go. And we can apply this and OK. And what we'll do is we're going to go back into... App Locker because there is an area inside App Locker which we never touched on, which is your packaged app rules. So let's go ahead and click on this one right here. You can see it's blank. So let's go ahead, right click, and we're going to automatically generate packaged app rules here. We're going to do it for everyone, and we're going to do it for all of the packaged apps on this computer. These are all the Windows apps that are packaged on this PC. And we're going to click next. We're going to remove this check mark here. And uh, what we're going to do is click next again. And this will go ahead and scan the system and generate our rule. You can see here there's rules 91 and there's packaged apps 91. So what that means now when we create this, it's going to give us a long big list of apps inside here, which we can control from inside the, this area. And this might be useful for people that want to block, you know, Windows apps rather than remove them and going through uh, that aggressive method of physically removing them, you can just block them inside here. So let's go down and find an application that we can uh, block and deny. So let's go down to the bottom. We'll have a look at, say, for instance, Microsoft Paint. And I think that's down near the bottom here. OK, so let's right click on this and go Properties and we'll set the action to Deny apply this and OK and you can now see there's a little red circle with a line for it and that means the application has now been denied so if we type paint here and we try to run it it's not going to run you can see it's given us the Windows cannot open this Microsoft Edge link uh, and that's because it won't be able to run because we've denied it uh, permission to run on the system and you can do that with as many as you like here uh, you know you can do this to the Microsoft Store or you can do it to Bing you can do it to a bunch of different stuff inside here and deny all of the access for those applications by using this method. Let's just do one more here. We'll do calculator and I'll show you how we can block that as well. So we'll go ahead and we'll right click on calculator, click deny, click OK. And we can now go to uh, Windows calculator here by typing calc and clicking on this one here. And you can see it won't open because it's been restricted. There we go. That's simple. And for the last one that I wanted to show you is blocking, uh, you know, applications by publisher because we never touched on that. So let me go back to App Locker and we can quickly look at publisher and blocking applications using the publisher uh, method. So let's go back to App Locker. And I'll quickly show you how we can block applications using the publisher feature. So inside executable rules, uh, we're going to go inside here and we're going to right click and we're going to create a new rule. And from here, we're going to basically go in here and go permissions, click deny. 
And we're now going to use the publisher option. So click next, click browse and choose the application. So let's go ahead and block, say, for instance, uh, Google Chrome. So I'm going to go into here and choose Google Chrome and then application and then chrome.exe. And you can now see the information as been given there. Now, file version, I want to change this to file name because the file version will be the star version, which means any version, any file version, and the file name will be blocked as well. So it's going to block both of those. So now we've got this set up, this will be a lot more secure and a, more, a lot more better for blocking applications. Click Next, and we can leave the uh, add exception here to Publisher as well. We don't need to change any exceptions on this particular rule. So click Next. And you can put a description in there if you wanted to, but click create and it's now created it. So let's go ahead and take a look at how good this is at blocking. You can see here it's blocking it when you click on it. And let's go to the location, right click on it and go to uh, go to opening file location. And it's blocking here, but what if I rename it? Will it still block it? And of course it will. It's going to block it because we've done it by a publisher and you can see here it's blocked. And that's much more better for blocking applications. And you can use all these in conjunction with each other if you want you to. But that's basically how you can restrict and block applications from running on your system. And you can lock a system down really, really tight and stop it from uh, running in the background and stopping people from opening certain applications as well. So anyway, that is going to be about it. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Let me know if you like this sort of content in the comments section down below. And if you want to see more stuff, let me know what you want to see, and I'll do my best to make those videos for you. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my YouTube members who have joined my YouTube members group. Whether you're tier one, tier two, or tier three, I really do appreciate the support. Have a lovely day, and I'll catch you in the very next video, or I'll catch you on the Discord server for a chat. Thanks again for watching. Bye for now.